My father shared a secret with me that ruined my entire life. My father told me this story over drinks the other night. He'd gotten a little tipsy and ended up telling me something that unraveled a dark truth about my uncle. When I was seven, I remember Uncle Mark always being my favorite relative. He always invited me around to show me his airsoft gun collection, have hide and seek parties with my friends and even took us to the beach. He would always come with sweets for us and acted like one of us, another child who just wanted to have fun. But then came the day when everything seemed to fall apart. Looking back, my uncle had told me we were going to go to the new amusement park that had opened up on the other side of town. I was so excited as I had been waiting for so long to have a chance to visit that place. My dad was happy and cheerful for the entire day, he was going on about how much he loved the fact his brother wanted to be in his children's life, and was excited to let me go to the new park. That was until his phone rang. I was in my room, packing my stuff when I heard the most blood-curdling scream from my dad. He was yelling at someone on the phone, louder than I had ever. I heard him rip open our front door and slam it back shut with enough force to make the picture next to it fall off the wall. I didn't see my dad for a long while after that. He never told me why until we had this talk, but that shall be explained at the end. My mom had a lot of money saved up from a minor lotto win, so we were alright financially. She kept assuring us, your father is just away for a while because he was looking after you and your siblings. Uncle Mark didn't come that day. We did see him around town, but he always ran away as soon as my mom saw him waving at me. Nine months later, my father came home and I excitedly ran and hugged him. He hugged me right back, and that night we had a party to celebrate his return. A week or so later, dad sat me down with the other children and explained that Uncle Mark wouldn't be coming around anymore. When I asked why, he just said Uncle Mark was a bad person and that if he ever tried to talk to us, we were to ignore him and come find one of them. We all agreed because my dad knew best. A year or so later, I was leaving school, and was waiting for my parents to pick me up when I saw Uncle Mark. He had a huge grin on his face and began approaching me. I was nervous to see him after what my dad had told me. He said he was here to pick me up. I told him I couldn't go with him, because my father said I wasn't allowed to speak with him. That's when Uncle Mark's tone seemed to change in an instant. He had this scary look on his face for a second, then he told me it was all good. He said he had spoken to my father about the situation, and that my father had changed his mind and asked him to pick me up from school that day. When I refused further, he grabbed my hand and began leading me towards his truck. Luckily for me, this was right as my father had arrived to pick me up from school. My dad ran up and punched Mark right in the face, blood spewing out of his mouth. I didn't see much after that except Uncle Mark running away with my dad chasing him. My dad came back after a little while, sighed and took me in for a hug. He told my mother to take me home, and that he'd see us later. He was lying, and I knew it would be a long time before I saw my father again. Five years. Five years my dad was gone. Sometime during this time period, my mom had admitted to us that he was in prison for protecting us. We all knew it was likely because he hurt Uncle Mark. We didn't know at that time, but Uncle Mark liked kids. A lot. The day I was meant to go to the amusement park my aunt, Mark's wife, had called my dad. She told him she'd found pictures under their bed of children and she was scared of what to do. Mark was a large man, and she later revealed that she was too scared to call the police as Mark had been abusing her for years. My father rushed over to their house that day and smashed in the door to find Uncle Mark screaming at my aunt as she waved the pictures around in hysterics. That day, my dad had beaten Uncle Mark within an inch of his life. The entire time my father was being arrested by police, Mark was screaming that he was going to make my father pay for what he'd done. The worst part was, by the time my dad had explained why he had done it, Mark managed to gather all the pictures, and incinerated them all. He also scared my aunt into saying nothing, so there was no evidence to use against him. My dad was sent to prison for assault, but made sure my other uncles and older cousins were around to protect us in case Mark came back. For the duration of my father's sentence, Mark didn't try anything. He waited until my dad thought we were safe. Come the day after school. It turns out Mark had come to kidnap me from right under their noses. And who would stop him? Nobody believed my dad when he explained who Mark truly was. They assumed he was just excusing himself for attacking him. After all, the police hadn't found anything and his wife said my dad was a liar. All they saw was my nice uncle here to pick me up. Unfortunately, my father was there. Luckily for Mark, he had a chance to escape, as my father had tripped while chasing him. But my dad knew where he would go. He knew Uncle Mark would run home to hide, and more than likely destroy any evidence he had acquired since destroying the last lot. He also knew the police would be on his tail for the attack on the school so he didn't have long. Sadly for Mark, my father was in a car, and he was on foot. He drove over and demanded to know if my aunt was going to lie again, after what Uncle Mark had just tried to pull. She said she wouldn't stop my dad or save Mark this time. My dad ordered her to get all the evidence she could as he waited for Mark to appear. She came back down with pictures. Lots of pictures. He then told her to go, wait one hour and then call the police. He was ending this. And as Uncle Mark appeared, my dad, who had been waiting behind the wall of his garden, slammed him through the door of his house. He then proceeded to beat him to death in his doorway. By the end, he could no longer see the floor through the blood. My dad was arrested on murder and did so without resistance, only saying he wished the police had done his job for him. When the true nature of Mark was revealed to the court, my father was instead charged for manslaughter, rather than murder. His lawyer stated my father had gone into a protective rage and had only intended to render him harmless. No one seemed to argue with these charges. Including my father. He said he didn't regret it, but that he wished he had done something else purely so that he didn't miss out on so much of our lives. After hearing the story, I was very grateful my father didn't tell me about this when I was younger. I know now I would not have been able to handle all of that.
and this only made me prouder of my father.